Wild Child is playing this Saturday at the Coach House right down the road in San Juan Capistrano. And Wild Child is not just another cheesy little cover band. They are the absolute real deal and consist of amazing, talented musicians that celebrate the Doors music in the most respectable and just amazing performance. I like that. <laughs> Do you hear that? We got a special guest with us today, and he is the lead singer, a.k.a. Jim Morrison, a.k.a. Dave Brock, lead singer of Wild Child. How are you doing today? Hello, hello. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. <laughs> well, welcome. We're so excited to have you. And so, first of all, uh, we just want to know, what is the secret for Wild Child and just so perfectly capturing the essence of the Doors and their music? Well, I, it starts off that we're just so good. Mm -hmm, that's <laughs> important. <laughs> no, um, we, uh, we're all really passionate about the music. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I, I started this so long ago, 33 years ago or something like that. Um, I don't even think that there was a term called tribute band at the time. There was a, a couple of other acts doing other people's music, but it really hadn't been developed into a, a scene like yeah. it is now. Um, so I, 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 I kind of came out of a theater background, mm -hmm. uh, doing a, a Jim Morrison rock opera is the first thing yeah, I did. It just kind of got me <laughs> into this thing um, that was put on by the family, uh, Morrison Estate. And um, from there, I, I started Wild Child probably about a year after that ended. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, or began putting things together for that because I, I put so much work into it and then when you do a production and then it it's over it's got whoa you can like you're at the edge of a cliff you know yeah you know <laughs> when you want to just keep going you know so I, I found it pretty easy to put my own show together and and without any props or um, preset scene and mm -hmm. or anything like that. I just figured out, oh, I'll just do a concert, you know, and, and try to leave the cheese out of it, you know? Yeah. So mm -hmm. I, I do a very minimum of, of talking in between songs. I don't try to explain uh, mm -hmm. what somebody was thinking when they wrote something or uh, anything like that. Pretty much leave that up to the people who paid to come and see us mm -hmm. and just shut up and do the music. I feel like that's what Jim did too. He was kind of—he was very dramatic and didn't mm -hmm. really do as much talking. A little bit of shouting. Well, if, but. <laughs> if there's something that happens uh, mm -hmm. during the show that that's actually happening, you know, it's okay to, to do some kind of a commentary on that. But you know, as far as something that's been uh, thought of in advance, that uh, well, after this song I'm going to do this, or you know, we just kind of leave that all. And we've got just great musicians. You know, fantastic. Mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time trying to get the best guys for for this show, so everybody's a pro. Yeah, I can um, definitely tell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, as you said, you were in that Jim Morrison opera, and because you, you know, not only do you look spitting image like Jim Morrison, especially when you're on stage, you are so good at capturing his mannerisms, his personality, and just everything about him. So before that opera, uh, had you had any experience or realization that you were pretty good at, at acting like Jim? Well, I, I had some pretty good experience singing in the shower. Like, <laughs> were you singing door songs in the shower? Yeah, you know, but that was, that was about it. I was a college student, you know, so um, really I uh, uh, just kind of got thrown into this sort of by accident, mm -hmm. uh, I, I guess you could say. I, I just showed up at a, uh, what turned out to be an audition uh, I was listening to Cami T or something like that, and Bill Gazzari, the godfather of rock and roll, was doing a commercial about, you know, Gazzari's nightclub and who was coming up, and Tuesday night bazoo, Wednesday night Jim Morrison rock opera, Thursday, and I just got done reading uh, No One Here Gets Out Alive, and I thought it was a, a fascinating read, so, yeah. like, oh wow, there's a, a rock opera going on, so, <laughs> you know, in the confusion of, of listening to the commercial, and it was like, 20 seconds or whatever, I, I showed up the next day to the for the show, and it turned out to be a live audition. <laughs> and it wasn't really advertised that way. You know, I walk into the place, and you know, there's a lady at the front door with a clipboard, and uh, she asked me what my name was. So, oh, she wants to know my name, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dave Brock, and she goes, okay, who sent you? I said, well, I sent me, you know. <laughs> okay, go on in, you know. Did your and, hair look like this at the time? And, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Actually, yeah, I always had sort of long hair. 
Okay, but, perfect. Um, and so I go inside and go, wow, I got in for free. It's awesome. <laughs> and there was about, I don't know, a hundred guys lurking around that were dressed like Jim. I go, oh, wow, this is weird. <laughs> you know, just hanging from the balcony <laughs> railings and whatever, you know, um, doing their best um, mood. It sounds like quite a sight, just yeah. hundreds of Jim Morrison's <laughs> yeah. in one room. Yeah, I walk in and, and there was an Andy Warhol guy on stage dancing around painting a mural while he was singing the song that he made up called Jim Morrison you big rock sucker you know and I, wow this is this is kind of crazy you know there was a band on stage and I, I, I got you know pretty quickly I figured out what was going on here because they were calling people up on stage from a, a clipboard mm -hmm. and the people would come up and do a song there was different characters besides Jim Morrison and there was a, a guy doing Jimi Hendrix you know there was a you know, Marilyn Monroe a James Dean and and they all had to participate in this thing, so it was kind of interesting. Yeah, what was the but what was I, the opera about? Well, see that that's uh, the whole premise of the opera was to give a different spin on "No One Here Gets Out Alive" the book, because mm -hmm. you know, let's face it, it was a very sensationalized book that really, in some aspects made Jim look like some kind of a demon you know <laughs> <laughs> so but there was a lot of other sides to him that I found out a great sense of humor and very intelligent person and um, you know things that were just kind of glossed over in the book uh, that th the family wanted to get out mm -hmm. they didn't really know how to do it other than to do a rock opera and present their own side and, and maybe it would have branched out into something else they thought well maybe a movie somewhere down the line or or whatever why can't they be involved with it you know it's, it was their yeah. thoughts on it so they're, they're um but respected. in all honesty they weren't um hollywood people or uh, mm -hmm. could figure out how to get financing or things like that they were they're kind of doing it all on their own which is a hard thing to do <laughs> <laughs> so, oh yeah 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 well, speaking of film, I saw that you were also, you played Jim in Death Becomes Her. That was, a, <laughs> that was a real fun thing to do. Yeah, how did that all come about? How did you get discovered well, they, that? Well, they, they just uh, called me to come down and, and do a scene. And um, it was a short scene. Mm -hmm. um, if you've seen the movie. Oh, I have. I watched it this half. Yeah, actually. And the, the, whole, the whole premise is, uh, you know, you drink an elixir and you could live forever and people faking their death. And mm -hmm. So there were all these celebrities at a, at a party scene that people thought were were dead you know they had staged their own death yeah. to make it look like they were dead but they get to live on forever because you can't go on for a long time looking young you know yeah. the, the, the jigs are gonna be up but anyway um so i just had a short scene and it, it was a lot of fun and i only had one line and it, you know, the zemeckis thought well, God, you know, there's, there's gotta be something else said here for this scene because bruce willis is crashing through the glass into the pool and a big, big big scene in the movie he said, what do, you, what do you think Jim would have saved right here? I said, well, I think he would have said, that's neat. <laughs> All right, we're going to shoot it. All right. I got to rewatch this. And, and I actually turned out to be a, probably one of the more funny little lines in yeah. the movie. Yeah. <laughs> I think I do remember that. Yeah. But I'm going to definitely rewatch that, as we all should. <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was terrific doing that. That sounds fun. so fun. Well, going back to Wild Child, I know one of your first performances was at the Whiskey Go-Go, correct? Um, big sellout. Yeah, um, our our first show there was a triple sellout. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, no no uh, radio coverage, advertising, nothing in the newspapers, just word of mouth and flyers. That's amazing, and yeah. and you frequently play there now. Actually, that's the first time yes. I saw you. Is that the whiskey? Yes, uh, <laughs> probably about three or four times a year. Okay, well, does that does it feel special playing at that venue because it's so iconic to the Doors? Absolutely. The Absolutely. Uh, everybody, mm -hmm. well, not everybody's played there, but so many special bands came from there and have played there. Um, oh, yeah. That was one of those places where back back in the early days of rock and roll, if you played there, there would be some record producers in the audience that you could get signed right there on the spot. You know, things yeah. like that would happen. <laughs> you know, nothing like that happens today, but um, that's where all that happened. Yeah, it even felt special for me. That's why I was... So excited in the first place seeing that you guys were playing there when I first saw you. And being a person that, you know, wasn't wasn't very close to being alive while the doors were around playing the Sunset Strip, it yeah. feels just so amazing to have a band like you helping us to 
recapture and feel like we're seeing the doors when a lot of us never got the chance to. That building seems like it, it has a vibe to it, definitely. Mm -hmm. When you go inside there, you just feel like you're in this almost a shrine, a rock and roll shrine. And I don't really know why, it's a pretty basic looking club, but it, you just feel it when you're in there. Yeah, I feel it too. And definitely, definitely really appreciate how you just make it feel like we're seeing the doors. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and speaking of the doors, um, you've toured with the doors. Actually, the first time I saw you, I even said out loud, that gym guy, he should be out there playing with Robbie Krieger. And then I found out you have, and yeah. with Ray. And so what was that like, being accepted by the doors themselves? and? For me, for me, that was the top of the mountain, mm -hmm. obviously. What else could I do that could be more significant than that from you know, what I do professionally? Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I, I got a, a kind of a last minute call. They had a singer that lost his voice and I guess some other things were going on, but um, I got kind of a, hey, you want to finish our tour kind of phone call, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, and of course, uh, sure. And uh, I think that the first time I was between Ray and Robbie on stage, I just, I couldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. you know? I mean, just, it felt great, you know? Um, and just to actually hear them play was the, the biggest thing. You know, the, the little nuances that they do mm -hmm. and improvisations. I mean, I felt like all of a sudden now, I, I heard it on bootleg tapes for years, but yeah. now I'm a part of it. Um, <laughs> It was, I, I can't really put that into words. Yeah, I can imagine. Where all did you go with them? Uh, we went to quite a few places, toured Europe uh, a few times, Russia a couple of times, which was great. Um, had a great experience there. Um, South America, Mexico, Canada, uh, East Coast of the United States, and places in between. Wow, I'm you sure know. you have some crazy stories. <laughs> It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Did you pick up any new ideas uh, for Wild Child playing with those guys? Um, I didn't. No, I don't. I, I never thought of it that way mm -hmm. at all. Um, it was just great to be playing with the real guys, you know. Um, yeah. It's terrific. Yeah. <laughs> and were you a big fan of The Doors growing up? Um, you know, I have to say yes. Uh, but. When I was a teenager, that music wasn't as popular as, as it is now. Yeah, um, totally. There was a resurgence yes. in more recent years of that music. I, I think so. I'm happy about it. Yeah, which I, I am too. <laughs> it's, uh, um, it's definitely, I, I hate to sound cliche, but it stood the test of time mm -hmm. uh, in reality. Um, you know, I guess that kind of lends to the... Uh, uh, the ability that they had as musicians mm -hmm. to create a musical form that nobody else had tried before as far as the way the different angles they came in to create the music from mm -hmm. from, from jazz to blues to uh, even uh, flamenco and um, and poetry because mm -hmm, everyone came in with yeah. a different mu musical like background some kind of a mad music. professor yeah. put, put something together but these guys just met each other uh, no producer put it together, or mm -hmm. uh, it was homegrown. I know, Ro or, yeah, Robbie had only been playing guitar for about six months, Jim never had vocal lessons, and yeah. so it sounds like it would be an, an amateur band, but obviously not. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I went to the Day of the Doors event at uh, the Morrison Hotel last Saturday, and, um, and they brought up a really interesting point. Uh, Robbie was being interviewed, and they had, they noticed that there were a lot of young people there, so they had everyone raise their hand who uh, who was born when Morrison Hotel came out, mm -hmm. and then everyone who wasn't born. And there was actually about 75% of the people weren't born, and it was a younger generation there. So that was really cool to see how mm -hmm. we the music. Well, yeah, the uh, if, if, the, if the music's gonna have any future, it has to be like that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you have any more encouraging words of advice of why our listeners should come to the show on Saturday? Well, they'll see a great show for one. <laughs> but uh, the Coach House itself is another one of those places. Uh, um, so many people have played there. Uh, you go inside, it's kind of got this dark wooden interior, wooden tables. Mm -hmm. And it in itself is a very interesting venue. And there's not a bad seat in the place. It, the, all the chairs and tables surround the stage. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think anybody's further than about oh, 20 yards from the stage. 
something like that. So um, yeah, it's always a good time. Always yeah, a good spot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's a very historic Orange County venue. I don't know if you could find anything here that's still standing that has the history that place has. Yeah, very true. And all the touring acts <laughs> that are coming through town mm -hmm. stop off and play there. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like it's going to be a very good time on Saturday, full of Doors music, and still a way to see the Doors live. What more could you ask from that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I think we definitely need to play some Doors songs here, so what songs would you like to hear? I love Strange Days. Strange Days? All right, I think we can do that. We'll throw that in. If you just tuned in, we're speaking with Dave Brock, lead singer of Wild Child, playing all the Doors music on this Saturday at the Coach House. It's going to be a great time. We're going to play some Doors for you right after this. Okay. 